Okay, we're going to do um, a couple of problems, three problems specifically from chapter 11. In chapter 11, this is uh, Kimmel, financial accounting, and we're looking at uh, reporting and analyzing stockholders' equity. So, um, as we did in the previous um, practice problem solution set, um, I have, um, I'm going to share the publisher's solution. We're going to read the exercise, talk about it a little bit, and then solve it um, by looking at the publisher's solution. So let's, let's share a screen, pull up the problem solution. This again, chapter 11. So let's look at brief exercise 11.6. So it says here, um, base corporation has 7,000 shares of common stock outstanding. It declares a $1 per share cash dividend November 1st to stockholders of record on December 1. The dividend is paid on December 31st. Prepare the journal entries on the appropriate dates to record the declaration in the payment of the dividend. So there's three, three important dates that are important. There are There is the declaration date, there is the record date, and there is the payment date. All three dates are important, but the only dates that you are making journal entries for are the declaration date, the date on which they recognize the liability, and the payment date, that's the day they actually disperse the funds. So um, as they said here, and this looks like there's a little bit of a, a typo here, it says they have, they have 7,000 shares, and that there's no typo. There's 7,000 shares, and I'm going to pay a $1 dividend. So on the declaration date, November 1, they're going to debit the cash dividends, which is a the dividends account is in the equity section of the balance sheet. It's a reduction of equity. Call it cash dividends, call it dividends, either one's fine. So dividends, debit $7,000, recognize the payable for $7,000 as well. On December 31st, they make the payment. They're going to decrease the liability and they're going to reduce the cash by $7,000. Very straightforward problem. Let's look at exercise 11-5. And again, it says here, 11-5, Quay Company had the following transactions during the current period. So they got one, two, three, four transactions, and they're asking you to journalize them. Let's take them one step at a time. On March 2nd, they issued 5,000 shares of $5 par value common stock to attorneys in payment of a bill for $30,000 for services performed and helping the company to incorporate. So you need a debit and a credit, obviously. So they did not receive cash on this transaction. What they received was legal services. So we're gonna have a debit to organizational expense for the legal fees of the value of that the fair value was $30,000. So that's how we're gonna value this transaction. And then the credit to the common stock, as you know, is for the par value, 5,000 shares at $5 par, $25,000 credit to common stock. And then lastly, you have paid in capital in excess of par for common stock for the difference between the value of the services of 30,000 and the par value at 25,000 credit for $5,000. Next transaction, June 12th, issued 60,000 shares of $5 par value common stock for cash for $375,000. So they received $375,000. You're gonna credit the common stock account for the par value, 60,000 shares at $5 a share, credit for $300,000. In order to balance the transaction, you have paid in capital excess of par. They received 375,000 of cash. The par value is 300,000. The credit to the paid in capital account is 75,000. On July 11th, they issued 1,000 shares of $100 par value preferred stock for cash at 110 per share. So again, the debit is for the amount of the cash received 
1,000 shares at $110 per share, $110,000. The preferred stock account is gonna be credited for the par value, 1,000 shares at $100 a share, $100,000. And lastly, the paid in capital account is for the differential, the difference between the cash received and the par value, paid in capital debit, a credit, credit for $10,000. Lastly, November 28th, they purchased 2,000 shares of treasury stock for $80,000. So they use the cost method to account for this transaction and they paid $80,000. So there was a credit to cash for $80,000. They paid it out and they took on treasury stock. So treasury stock is a component of the equity section of the balance sheet. It's a reduction of the equity section because it has a debit. So it's a debit to the treasury stock for 80,000, credit to cash for 80,000 as well. Let's take a look at exercise number 10. And this deals with dividends, the allocation between preferred dividends and common dividends when you have or not have cumulative preferred stock. Exercise 10, corporation was organized on January 1, 2021. During its first year, the corporation issued 2,000 shares of $50 par value preferred stock and 100,000 shares of $10 par value common stock. At December 31st, the company declared the following cash dividends, 2021, 5,000, 2022, 12,000, 2023, 28,000. Show the allocation of dividends to each class of stock. This is item A. Assuming the preferred stock dividend is 6% and non-cumulative. So in the first year, they issued, what, 5,000 shares of stock. And the allocation to in item, in item A is, remember what it says, it says assuming the preferred dividend is non-cumulative. So in 2021, they declared $5,000 and the percentage that they receive is they're going to get five thousand dollars of it. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go back to uh, sharing the screen here. So we were looking at this um, exercise number ten, and and let's remember here that in item A. In item A, the preferred stock is non-cumulative. So in 2021, they declared a dividend of $5,000. The preferred stockholders are entitled to $6,000 per year in item A, right? They got 2,000 shares, $50 par. That's $100,000 in par value. If they're going to get 6%, they're entitled to receive $6,000 in 2021. However, they only declared a $5,000 dividend. So the preferred stockholders get the entire $5,000, even though they're only they're entitled to $6,000. There's only $5,000 available and it's non-cumulative. So they receive the $5,000. Common stockholders get none. In 2022, they declared a dividend of $12,000 for the company. The preferred stockholders only get $6,000, 6% of 100,000, because it's non-cumulative. Because it's non-cumulative, they just get the one year at $6,000, and the remainder goes to the common stockholders. In year 2023, the company declared a dividend of $28,000, the preferred stockholders, once again, are non-cumulative. They're only entitled to the one year, which is 2,000 shares, $50 a share, $100,000 times 6%. They're only entitled to $6,000. The common stockholders get the balance. Item B, it says, show the allocation of dividends to each class of stock, assuming the preferred stock dividend is 7% 
and cumulative. So that means you always have to catch up. If they miss a dividend, they have to catch up. The preferred stockholders need to be whole before anything goes to the common stockholders. So in item B, company still declares a $5,000 dividend. The preferred stockholders are entitled to what? 2,000 shares, $50 par value, $100,000 times 7%. They're entitled to $7,000. There's only five available. They get the entire five. The common stockholders get none. 2022, the company declares a dividend of $22,000. How much do the preferred stockholders get? Well, remember, they're entitled to $7,000 a year, $100,000 a par, 7%, $7,000 a year. However, they have $2,000 to catch up. In other words, in 2021, they were supposed to get $7,000. They only received $5,000. So they got a carryover, if you will, of $2,000. Plus the current year at $7,000 in 2022, they're entitled to $9,000 of the 12 the balance of three goes to the common stockholders. In 2023, there's a declaration of 28,000. The preferred stockholders are up to date. They're only going to get their current year at 7% of the 100,000. They get 7,000. The balance of 21 goes to the common stockholders. And item C in this problem says journalize the declaration of cash dividend at December. 31st, 2023. Well, there's no distinction between preferred and common when it comes to the journal entry. The debit is to dividends for 28,000, credit to dividends payable. Those are the three problems that are important for this chapter, chapter 11. So thank you.